This is a, uh, a webinar called Getting Your Business Online. Um, my name is Gary Parker, and this uh, webinar is brought to you um, by uh, CNT Associates. We are working in partnership with Bexley Council, uh, and the, it's part of the Talking Business Programme, which is uh, funded by the UK government's uh, UK Shared Prosperity Fund. We uh, are going to uh, present this today. This will be, is being recorded, so you should be aware of that. Uh, if you don't want to be identified, then please go uh, off uh, camera. Um, we can edit it. Uh, we've, uh, we're very conscious of uh, safety related um, uh, issues. So um, what we are uh, going to do uh, is start the presentation uh, very shortly. Um, if uh, you could all stay on uh, mute, please, while we do the uh, presentation. My name is Gary Parker, and uh, I'm introducing this. Uh, the presentation will be my, by my colleague, uh, Sybil Mayard. CNT Associates is a business support and fundraising organization. Um, and uh, we work with a wide range of businesses, social enterprises and charities to provide business support and fundraising services. Um, I'm going to uh, hand you over to my colleague, Sybil to introduce herself and Sybil if you can enable the presentation as well. Uh, that's myself. Um, I've already briefly introduced myself. Uh, that is our website uh, address, cntassociates.com. Um, we also have a YouTube channel as well where this recording will go eventually and uh, possibly on some other platforms as well. So. Uh, you're able to view it again and um, uh, we look forward to uh, working with you. Uh, over to you, Sybil. And this is myself. My name is Sybil. I provide website design and development services to SMEs and during the last Three or over three years, I've been working with a range of small businesses from a variety of different sectors, helping them to improve their online presence through better web design. Okay. Um, sorry, Del, can you go on mute, please? We can hear you in the background. Um, this is the outline of the uh, workshop this morning. Um, we've just done the introductions. Then we're going to look at the benefits of an online presence, um, what you need to develop uh, your online capability, <clears throat> some background information about building a website. Um, and uh, then we're gonna move on to creating a professional email address, um, track the performance of your website uh, and uh, market your business. We're gonna uh, touch on some techniques you can use to do that uh, and a range of other free tools to help you uh, enable your online uh, services. Um, then we're gonna look at some security and safety issues online. And finally, um, our contact information and some useful links. So um, back to you, Sybil. If you can skip that one. Yeah, so and um, thank you, Gary, for the introductions. And I'm going to deliver the main part of the presentation today. So we're talking about the benefits of having an online presence. Uh, if you're not online already, then now is the time to start thinking about having an online presence because there are many benefits to having one and here are a few. So there are low 
operating costs. Your business is accessible to customers 24 seven. So even whilst you're asleep, your website is working for you, getting those customer inquiries in. If you have an e-commerce store and um, getting orders in for you, um, even a social media presence will help you to um, get those inquiries and um, yeah, from customers. You can manage your business from anywhere as long as you have a an internet connection, you can potentially reach an international audience. It's very easy to track analytics and customer behavior and we'll look at a tool that can help you to do that later on. And a small carbon footprint compared with if you were running your business um, at a physical location. So what are the things you need in order to start your online presence? So here is a list of things. You might not need all of these to begin with, but um, here is uh, the, main, uh, the main things that I would suggest looking into. So firstly, um, a website, a custom domain, a professional email address, hosting provider, SEO, which is search engine optimization, email marketing, a blog, a social media platform, and ads. And we'll look at all of these um, during this presentation today. So one of the things that um, you'd want to be thinking about is building a website. Um, but before you even start to think about what um, website builder should I use, for example, then it's good to do some planning. So I would suggest thinking about the time you have available for this, whether you're going to build it yourself or hire someone to do it for you. What is your budget for the project? Whether you have the skills already to do it? and the requirements of your project, so how complex it will be. Then you would want to think about the requirements. So what are the pages and content you want to have on your website? Whether you need some additional features like a blog or a photo gallery? And what functionality you'd want to have on there? So that could be a newsletter form, for example, e-commerce, a contact form, maybe a chat bot. And it is possible to start for free and we'll look at a free platform in a second. And rather than building a website from scratch, the best thing to do is use a website builder. And we'll discuss a few popular website builders. So on to the next slide, we're starting with Wix. So you might have heard of this popular platform. It allows you to develop a website for free. There's no need to get a hosting plan because Wix provides the hosting for you. If you need additional features, then there's the Wix app market from where you can download and install um, additional apps for your site. Good thing about Wix is that it does not require any maintenance. So all of the updates are done for you. And if you're thinking about starting an e-commerce business, then Wix can be used uh, to build an e-commerce store for selling your products online. And if you want to access advanced features, for example, removing ads from your website, connecting a custom domain or taking payments online, then you need to upgrade to a paid plan. But when you're just starting, you could begin with the free plan to test the platform out. The second platform we have is wordpress.org, uh, another very popular platform. 
And this is the one that I recommend most of the time to my customers, uh, yeah, to my customers because it's a very powerful and customizable platform. So you can do almost anything with it if you know how. So with WordPress, you have access to a wide range of themes and plugins to enhance the functionality of your site and many of which are free. If you're running an e-commerce business, you can use a plugin called WooCommerce and this will convert your WordPress site into an e-commerce store. Now, one of the um, kind of downsides is that the WordPress um, platform itself is free, but you do need to set up hosting and register a domain before installing it. Um, and you also need to keep it maintained. So on a regular basis, you will need to go into the admin to keep your themes, plugins, and your WordPress files updated. And you would need to create backups. So um, the backups are useful in case something, some error might occur on your website. So if you back it up on a regular basis, at least you have a previous version to revert to if something does go wrong. But on the whole, um, I, I like the WordPress platform. I think it's very flexible and it's highly recommended. And thirdly, we have Shopify. So this is what I recommend if you are running an e-commerce business. So Shopify is a very popular e-commerce platform which powers millions of merchants worldwide. So here are a few reasons why you might want to choose it. You can sell an unlimited number of products on your Shopify store. The themes are highly customizable without the need for editing any code. If you need more features, there are apps available from the Shopify app store and there are both free and paid apps available. And to give you an idea of costs, the basic Shopify plan costs £25 per month usually, but there is an offer at the moment where you can get it for only £1 a month for three months. So you might want to look into that. Alternatively, if you contact us, we can set up an unlimited trial store for you. So this is a store that doesn't have any time limits and it allows you to explore the platform uh, for as long as you like and, um, uh, and build your store without any limits of a, a trial. Then lastly, um, another benefit of Shopify is you do have 24-7 access to the Shopify support team via various channels such as chat, email, and the community forums. And the list goes on. There are many other website builders out there like Squarespace, Webflow, Weebly, etc. But um, it can be difficult choosing the right one for you. So I would suggest doing some research, maybe choose two to three of these maximum, um, have a look at them, compare the features, pricing, and choose the one that you think is the most suitable for your project. So next we'll move on to registering a custom domain. So first of all, what is a domain? This is the address of the website and this is what appears in the address bar of the browser. So when you're choosing a domain for your website, here are some tips. It's good to choose one which is as short as possible. Include your business name, choose an appropriate domain extension. For example, common ones are .com, .uk, .org, etc. But there are now so many of these around and there's specialized extension, 
extensions like .tech, .careers, which you might want to, to go with. It's good to avoid hyphens and numbers because when you include hyphens and numbers, people um, tend to type them in incorrectly. So avoid those. You can purchase more than one domain. Domains are relatively cheap. So this is optional, but you might want to register different variations of your domain. Um, because what this means is that if people type make a mistake when they're typing in a domain, um, they can you can still uh, make that domain redirect to your main one. And yeah, as we said, domains are quite cheap. So they start from around seven pounds a year plus VAT, depending on your provider. And here are some examples of domain providers. So GoDaddy, very popular one, is also Namecheap and 123reg and so on. Next, we're talking about a professional email address. So if you don't have one ready, it's good to set up a professional email address. Um, email is a very convenient and low cost way to communicate with your customers. And you probably have a free email address already provided by Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, or a similar one. But uh, if you want a, an email address that is uh, matching your domain uh, in the form of your name at your company name.com, for example, then you will need to upgrade to a paid email address. So when you're choosing your email hosting package, um, you can do this at the same time when you're purchasing your domain. And it's a good idea to select an email package that gives you ample storage space. So what I mean by this is you don't want to choose a package that gives you say 100 megabytes because that's going to fill up very quickly. So you might want to look into one that starts from say two gigabytes to five gigabytes at the start and then look into um, expanding that later on as you get more emails in. So now we'll go on to setting up your hosting plan. So this is only really required if you're using the WordPress platform, because if you're using a platform like Wix, for example, Shopify, Squarespace, the hosting is already included in the plan. So you don't need to worry about this. But if you are choosing WordPress, then here is some um, advice about hosting. So as we said, WordPress um, is just a piece of software that needs to be installed somewhere. So that hosting is where the software is going to be installed. So when you're choosing a hosting plan, it's a good idea to choose one that includes an SSL certificate. So SSL just means that your site is secure. So if you see um, on when you go to a website in the address bar of the browser, you'll sometimes or most of the time you will see a padlock symbol. And that indicates that the site has an SSL certificate on it. So when you're setting up your hosting, um, you need to make sure that that SSL is installed so that when visitors are browsing your site, then you, they'll see that padlock symbol and that indicates that the site is secure for them to, to use. So when you're researching prices uh, for hosting providers, have a look at the features, compare the features across these different providers and make sure you're getting the best deal because sometimes you might find that you're just paying too much when you can get a better deal somewhere else. 
choose a package that's best for your needs. So you need to look at things like how much traffic your website is getting, how much storage space um, your website needs, and look for a hosting plan that fits your requirements. So the costs for hosting can vary a lot depending on the provider, but they start from around six pounds per month plus VAT. And here are a few examples of popular hosting providers. There's SiteGround, Bluehost, Dreamhost, WP Engine, and so on. So you might have heard of the term SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. And what this is, is it's a process that helps your website to rank higher in search results. So when you're searching for a term on Google, there's an algorithm that determines in what order the results are going to appear. And if you have a website and you want your website to appear higher uh, for certain search queries, then SEO is what you need to perform on your website. So SEO is organic, meaning it doesn't use paid advertising and it doesn't cost you anything to do SEO unless you're hiring someone to do it for you. And what you need to do is to look at things like page titles, meta descriptions, alt tags and images, and in here include relevant keywords. So keywords are the main words that describe your website and what your website is about or what your business um, is about. Fix broken links. So if there's a link on the, your website and when I click on it, I get an error that the page isn't found. That's not a good thing for SEO. So you need to either fix or remove those, those links. Make sure that your site has a logical structure. So when people are browsing your site, it's easy for them to find what they're looking for. Navigation is a simple. Your website does need to load fast. Um, it should have a good experience for users and it should be responsive. So when we say responsive, we're talking about um, it works just as well on a mobile phone as it would on a desktop or a laptop computer. And that's very important because most people are browsing on mobile nowadays. You may be building your website on a laptop and you might forget that um, people are using mobile so that you're focusing just on the desktop experience but you it's very important uh, for you to consider how it's going to look and work on a mobile as well so I would recommend um, checking your website on a mobile phone to make sure it's working there um, as well as it does on other devices. There's a, there's a free tool called Google Search Console. Um, you, a good idea is to submit your site into Google Search Console, and that helps to get your website indexed faster in Google. And lastly, as we mentioned, SSL certificates and uh, make sure your site has one because if it doesn't, then your site may get penalized by Google or other search engines. So we mentioned about how um, having a website makes it easier to track customer behavior. And one of the ways to do that is to install a free tool called Google Analytics 4 or GA4. So with this tool, um, you're able to monitor various metrics. So things such as page views, 
acquisition, which means how people are finding your website, whether that's through searching online, uh, searching through a search engine, whether that's through social media or some other means, number of users, location of customers, so what countries your customers are coming from, what devices they're using to access your website, and so on. And the reason why this is important is because you need to know how your website is performing so you can make improvements to it. So for example, you're finding that um, there are certain pages on your website that people are not staying very long on. So they're going to your, your page and then they're leaving very quickly soon afterwards. Then that might give you um, some clue as to what you need to optimize on your site. So if you have a look at the page, see if there's something on there that's not, um, not making people want to stay on it. Maybe the page is uh, loading very slowly. Maybe there's too much content on it. It could be some something on there that needs to be addressed. So it's good to go into your Google Analytics and have a look at all these um, the different metrics and see what kind of insights you can gain from these. And from that, use that information to make improvements and adjustments to your website so that your site performs better and gives you better results. So now we're going to talk about marketing your business. So we'll give you a few different tools and techniques that you can utilize. So the first one we have is email marketing. So you're probably familiar with things like newsletters. Um, email marketing is a powerful tool for keeping your customers engaged. So uh, types of content that you can put into your emails and newsletters could be um, latest news about your business and updates, what you've been up to, some offers, competitions. If you're launching a new product or service, then you can talk about that. Uh, maybe a new blog post that you've just written, you've put onto your website you can put a link to that in your newsletter. So be creative with the types of content that you can um, put into your email marketing. And talking about performance again, so just like uh, we want to monitor the performance of our website, we also want to monitor the performance of our email campaigns. So within your email marketing tool, there'll be some analytics that you can look at and some key metrics you want to focus on are things like open rate. So how many people are opening your emails, click through rate, which means how many are clicking links in your emails, bounce rate, this um, would be how many emails are bouncing. So uh, some email address, email addresses that you're sending to might not be active, might be incorrect emails. Um, so it's no point in sending emails out to addresses that don't exist or don't work. So they need to be removed from your email list. And then also unsubscribe rate. So by looking at these key metrics, again, you're going to be able to make in adjustments and improvements to your email campaigns uh, so you can maximize the number of people who actually read them and take action. Um, and by take action, I mean clicking links, um, go, clicking the links, going to your website, um, reading more more information, etc. And 
here are a few examples of email marketing platforms. All of these have a free plan, so um, you might want to try these out. So MailChimp, that's a very popular one. MailerLite, uh, you might not have heard of, but it's a good alternative. And I actually find MailerLite much easier um, if you're just getting started with email marketing and find it easier to navigate. And thirdly, there's HubSpot. So HubSpot is actually good for um, other marketing tools as well, not just email. So if you're looking for um, other, if you're looking to do more as well as email marketing, for example, setting up a, a chat bot or a CRM system, as well as email marketing, you want might want to look into HubSpot because it gives you a lot of features, um, even on the free plan. Another thing you might want to think about is starting a blog. So um, a blog is a series of articles that you will you would post usually on your website, but could be on other platforms as well as, for example, on LinkedIn. And it's a good way to demonstrate that you are an expert in your field. Maintaining a blog is good for keeping your audience informed and engaged, informing them about the latest trends, products, technologies, etc. It's good for improving the SEO of your website, as we talked about earlier. And the reason is because search engines like websites that are kept updated on a regular basis. It shows that you are active and um, you've got a, a lot to, to offer. You've got um, good content to offer your audience. All of the website builders that we mentioned previously offer blogging tools. So whichever one you choose, um, there will be a blogging functionality there for you to utilize. And the thing with blogging is that it is a long-term process. So it does take time for you to start seeing results because blogs are something you might do maybe twice, once, twice a month. And over a long period of time, then you will start to see results. So for example, um, more inquiries on your website or your website um, moving higher up in the search engine rankings. But it's um, very, very worthwhile to do. Another thing that you might want to try is posting on social media because it's a very effective and inexpensive way to market your business. Utilizing social media is um, a great way to engage directly with your followers. And the key here is producing relevant content and publishing regularly. So like blogging, it is a long-term strategy, so it will take time for you to see results. So with, with social media, the important thing is you need to understand your audience, who, who uses these platforms, um, what type of content they are looking for, uh, and produce content that is relevant to your audience because if not then you're not you're just not going to get the right sort of engagement levels that you're looking for so uh, think about whether your audience is looking to be informed whether they want to be entertained whether they like um, webinars uh, whether they prefer um, uh, whether they like um, competitions. So um, 
similar to your email newsletter marketing, think about, think, really think um, carefully about the types of content that you're putting out to your audience. And here's a list of popular social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. So there's one platform here that is not listed. It's called Nextdoor. It's not um, technically a social media platform, but works in a similar way. And Nextdoor might be good if you have a local business and you want to connect with people in your local community. And yeah, so it works in a similar way. You can um, create a business profile on them. You can post updates. Um, offers, keeping people informed about your business. So that's another one that you might want to look into. Getting reviews. So it's um, very important for you to, uh, to have social proof, whether that's on your website, um, on Google, on LinkedIn, or elsewhere. One um, free tool that you I would recommend looking into is Google Business Profile. So when you're typing the name of a business into Google, sometimes you might see a box pop up on the right-hand side with the information about the business in more detail, and that's that's their Google business profile. Um, so having a Google business profile doesn't cost anything. Um, it's a good way to showcase your business on Google. And what you what I would recommend doing is asking your clients to write reviews for you. So if you ask your client for a testimonial and you just copy and paste that on your website, then, yeah, it could look as if you've actually made up that testimonial. I'm not saying you have done that, but it could look that way. But if you um, ask them to write it on a tool like Google, then that gives it much more credibility. So when you go into your Google business pro profile account, there will be a link there. So uh, the good uh, convenient thing is that you can send this link to your customers. And when they click the link, it will take them directly to a box where they can type in their review and click submit. And then it will be shown on your business profile. And I suggest to respond to all reviews, whether they are good or bad, because it shows that your um, your business is active and you're listening to your customers' feedback. And as well as reviews on the Google business profile, there's other pieces of information you can put onto there, like your address, um, if you have a physical address, um, your opening hours of contact information, FAQs, and so on. And the more uh, information you fill out, the better. Then last on our list of marketing tools are paid advertising. So uh, all most of, or all of the tools we talked about so far um, can be done for free. Uh, paid advertising is um, paying for ads to be displayed on various platforms. So paid advertising is a fast way to gain visitors to your website and increase conversions. However, it can be expensive. So define your budget and stick to it. And you do need to be careful with the amount that you're spending on these ads. 
You can run paid ads on search engines like Google or Bing, and also in social media like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Advertise on the platform or platforms that your audience is using. That's important because you don't want to be spending money on adverts, uh, advertising on platforms if your audience isn't there. So you need to do research, understand your audience, what platforms they're using, how they're using it. And monitor the performance of your campaigns so that you can make adjustments and improvements. So again, we're looking at the analytics, gathering information, understanding how the campaigns are performing, and then looking at ways that we can make improvements to them. Okay. So I've put together here a list of other useful tools, all of which are free. Because as you find um, from running your business, you'll come across many, um, many different problems and think uh, how you can solve them in the most cost effective way. So uh, here's a very handy list of different tools that you might want to look into. Uh, so the first one is uh, Chat GPT. So we're not we, we we should be talking about AI in a um, subsequent webinar. Um, but if you don't know what Chat GPT is, it's an AI tool that can help you with your writing. So um, it can help you with blog posts, for example, and many other uses. And we're not going to read through all of these, but um, yeah, we've got various tools for document creation and collaboration, file storage, project management, graphic design, scheduling social media posts. So rather than posting uh, your uh, posts manually on social media, you can use a tool which will post them automatically at a specific time that you set it to. So you can just set it and then forget and um, yeah, it will be scheduled at a specific time. Video conferen conferencing tools and meeting scheduling tools. Then I just want to talk a little bit about cybersecurity and staying safe online. Um, very important topic, but not uh, sometimes is um, neglected. So uh, don't reuse passwords across multiple websites and um, use a password manager so a password manager is a tool, usually a browser add-on that allows you to save all of your passwords into it so you don't have to remember them or write them, write them down on pieces of paper. And it will help you to create strong passwords and it will alert you if you're using the same password across several websites, so very useful. Install antivirus software on all of your devices, um, including your phone, and keep them up to date. Don't submit sensitive data on unsecured websites. So we talked about secure websites, SSL certificates. If you see a website that doesn't have a padlock symbol in the address bar, then it's not secure. So do not submit data like contact information or card information on these websites. Check the address bar in the browser to verify that you are actually on the site that you intended to visit. 
So what this means is you might have received an email with a link in it. You click the link and it goes to a website that looks like PayPal, for example. But if you look at the address bar, it isn't actually PayPal, it's something else. So that is um, a, a fake website, which is intended to trick you into entering your information. So close the page immediately. So it's rather than clicking links, um, it's better to type the um, address of the website directly into the browser, then you know you're on the site that you intended to go to. Only download apps or software from legitimate sources and always install the latest version. So um, basically don't download um, apps or software from dodgy websites and uh, don't install previous versions because the latest one will, will be the most updated one. Don't click on links or don't download attachments from suspicious emails. Keep all of your devices up to date. So annoying as it may be, um, we're constantly getting notifications about new, um, new software versions, new operating system versions, but we do need to keep them updated at all times. And lastly, if you are using the WordPress platform, you do need to keep your website updated. So we talked about updating plugins, themes, WordPress files, um, because if you don't do that, then that could um, present a security risk to your site and you risk losing information or you risk being hacked. Okay, so that concludes the main part of this presentation today. So we are now open to taking any questions. So you can either um, speak out loud or type your question into the chat, whichever is best for you. Uh, Yvonne from My Wellbeing has a question. If you want to go ahead, Yvonne. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Yes, um, we can hear you, Yvonne. Hi. Yeah, hi. Yes, uh, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, very informative, very useful. Um, my question is related to charities uh, or, you know, um, companies set up for charitable purposes. Um, I'm made to understand that they are ways in which we can get funding for building websites. Would you know anything about that? Um, um, in okay. Okay. So, perhaps I can answer that one, Sybil. Um, okay. it, it depends that there are some programs around for this, but um, have you got a, a charitable organization at the moment, Yvonne? Are you running one? Yes, I am. What, what, how's it constituted? Is it a charity or is it something else like a community interest company? Uh, it's a limited company set up for charitable purposes and we're in the middle of registering it with the Charities Commission. Right. Uh, yeah, the, 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 when you get registered with the Charity Commission, um, what, is it going to be a CIO? Is that what, what you, you're setting it up as? Yeah, so, it's, it, so well, as soon as it's registered, it, it will be a charity. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, because there, there are some funding programs uh, that do help on that. Um, what I would suggest to you is once you get your charity registration number, because you'll get asked for this anyway, in terms of support, you contact us again and we'll give you some further advice about that. Um, but but there are uh, th there's a number of programs of, around because there's some organisations, there's one called the worshipful company of information technologists and they provide some some free services but i think that's more in terms of advice and helping to build or support uh websites the the, the other thing you can do is if you're applying for other charitable grants if um for example i've worked with some organizations that have ha already have websites but as part of a project 
uh, they, they've set up a, another web page uh, about that particular project and, th and that was able to be funded as well. So there may well be funding for the website itself uh, if you're a registered charity um, and there's, there's probably other funding around as part of other projects, if you see what I mean. Okay. And um, oh, can I just ask a follow-up question as well, if that's okay? Sure. Um, do you normally run a session about funding for charities as well? Did I say something like that? So, sorry, say that again. Do you run sessions on funding for charities? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. If you, the, the other thing you should do, uh, Yvonne, because I think it's coming up, is you should look at our YouTube channel because we've got quite a lot of presentations mm. on funding for various types of organisations, including for wellbeing organisations, because that's an area that CNT itself uh, specialises in. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. Um, if you want to email us offline, I'll I'll see if we can have a follow up conversation on this. Okay. Okay. Um, what's the best email? Um, if you said it, it's in the chat, uh, if you look in the chat, uh, uh, oh, it's there. there so we'll put it on on screen. Yeah. Um, those are the info at cntassociates.com. It's on the screen now, um, and our YouTube channel details are there and in the chat as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, any any other questions from anybody? Uh, let's just have a look. Okay. So I just um, wanted to also add um, to Yvonne's question. So this is not about funding. However, there are some companies that offer discounts or even free hosting for websites. So, for example, one of them is called Kualo, and I'll put this into the chat. And if you go into the website, they have a page on free charity hosting, which you might want to look into. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else got any, uh, any other questions for us? Um, um yeah, I just had a very quick one, if that's okay. Hi, um, I'm not a very technical person. And I noticed that you'll let you invest the time. Uh, Abir, can you go on mute, please? Thanks. Cheers. Oh, um, you were mentioning about um, a couple of different uh, types of website, like Wix and uh, WordPress. A uh, WordPress, you have to maintain that yourself. So, from from my perspective, it would be better for me maybe to go on something like Wix, would it? So that I let Wix do all the maintenance and things like that, and hopefully they can help me out with the website. Yes, um, th that's correct. If you don't want to be like having to go into your admin every time and updating plugins and things, um, then yes, something like Wix would be better for you because you won't have to worry about that. And Wix does have a good customer service support as well. They're quite responsive. So if you have problems with the website, you can always contact them anytime. Do you know how I contact them? Because I was thinking of going with Wix and I Googled their customer service, but I didn't get anything in return. So I didn't know how I would be contacting them. So it may be that you have to have an account with them first. And then from there, there'll be a page on their website that has a contact and you click that and you can either chat to them or you can request a call back. Right. Okay, then, because I do have a domain with them. Okay. So, so I, I would should then hopefully be able to contact them, but uh, I just have to go onto their website. Do I like Wix dot com? Yeah. So I, you can probably do it from within your Wix account. I'm sure there'll be a help link in there, or if not, you can Google what your problem is, and then they'll probably be on the page like do you need more help click here and then that should link that should lead you to your um to the, the help section and the, the chat the chat or the call back well I might need to come to you separately because I am um, that's kind of gone a bit over my head because uh yes if, if that's okay Sybil yeah of course just um, thank you out anytime thank, thank you very much I appreciate yeah. it um, I've just had a question from uh, Lara. 
um, uh, about uh, hosting and other facilities being used uh, as taxable expenses. Yes, you can do that because they are a business expense, you know, because you need to set them up as long as it's a, a business website and obviously um, or, or, uh, not, a, not a personal one. Um, um, and I mean, personal in terms for social purposes, rather than, you know, you could be a sole trader and have one as an individual and use that. But yes, I mean, you, you will probably need to uh, uh, get some further advice on an accountant about this. But in general terms, uh, you can claim hosting, domain and other uh, expenses as part, as part of your business expenses. Um, Abir, we've got a query from Abir. So I see that um, Abia has asked in the name of the funding. So it might be a question. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Have you got um? Have you have you got a charity? So sorry, you, you're breaking up. Uh, uh, there, Abia. Uh, have you got a charity already? Or a charity? Oh, yeah, I have um five one c three. S sorry, the, yes. the, the con connections. Say, say that again. The connection is not very clear. Yes, I do. Uh, and and what 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 does the charity do? It's actually a five five hundred one c three um for a, a ministry deliverance ministry. Uh, for for a nursery, um. Yeah, if it's a registered charity, like like I I said to Yvonne, there there are some uh, programs out there that can uh, uh, support um, uh, charities in terms of the uh, infrastructure. Um, also, if you've got uh, if you submit an application for a uh, funding for childcare purposes, for example, uh, as part of that you could uh, uh, put in some online services uh, as part of that. Uh, for example, uh, with the lottery, you can do that um, uh, on, on the small strands like Awards for All, where you can get up to £20,000 now. If, if as long as that service um, is going to be used by the beneficiary beneficiaries of the lottery grant, uh principally other people can access them as well because if they're online services but uh they've got to uh be part of the project and uh be accessible by the participants on that project that's uh, you're cutting out yeah okay um any, any other questions from people Okay, well, um, we've we've just uh, about exactly uh, run to time because it's exactly twelve uh, noon, um, and uh, this will be recorded. It's been recorded, uh, and will go uh, on our YouTube channel eventually, and possibly on some other platforms. Um, our YouTube channel uh, is uh, there uh, um, for you to access. Uh, and um, I've just had another query from Lara. Yes, we are going to run a webinar about chat GPT as part of this program uh, in Bexley. Uh, that um, is not scheduled until next year because this program runs for uh, over another year. It's only just started, really. So um, uh, we will be notifying okay. people in due course. Uh, but we are uh, working on various things related to uh, AI at this moment. And uh, once that work is complete, we will um, uh, do that. Uh, uh, we'll roll that webinar out to people, but we'll notify uh, people out there. Uh, what's the way to get updates about new events? Uh, you should be on our mailing list. We're, we're, we're on MailChimp. Uh, anybody, uh, yeah, everybody who's registered this morning must be on it because we get your email address via. Um, MailChimp. Um, uh, watch out for our regular updates uh, about uh, services that we are providing, which includes live events, webinars, 
uh, and other training. And um, if you also want to look at our website, there's a lot of information on that as well. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for all attending today. It's been much appreciated. I hope you've uh, found it informative and got something out of this. Um, and uh, as I said right at the beginning, this is part of Talking Business, which is a program uh, funded by the UK's uh, Government Shared Prosperity Fund and supported locally via uh, Bexley Council. So thank you all for joining us today uh, and I look forward to seeing you all again. Take care.